The International Water Crisis. The origination of our water supply problems, how our water is at risk, and what you can do about it. Firstly, we need some background info. The water cycle! Yay! In the water cycle, water is evaporated from our surface, forming clouds through condensation. These clouds then relieve themselves of their weight through precipitation. The precipitation falls to Earth's surface, forming our lakes, rivers, and adding to the mass of the ocean. What do we have for water right now? 97% of Earth's water is salt. 3% is fresh water found in lakes, rivers, and glaciers, most of which are too polluted for human consumption. So most of our drinking water is groundwater, the stuff we've been relying on for thousands of years. The problems. So how is this at risk, and why should we be concerned? For many different reasons, but the three largest are, firstly, agricultural chemical pollution, a.k.a. chemicals used in farming, even if not used near a water source, which find their way to rivers, ponds, and lakes, and even the ocean, as seen in the Mississippi River and the Gulf of Mexico. There, they either cause immediate damage, or they get recycled up into the atmosphere by way of the water cycle, and then they come down in the form of rain in another location. The most common negative impact is the choking out of wildlife by algae blooms, caused by the fertilizers used in agriculture. While not directly impacting the human drink and supply, it impacts local and global economies, specifically tourism and the fishing industry. Secondly, we have industrial chemical pollution, aka industries such as paper production, coal mining, oil drilling, etc., that create and use chemicals that get into our water water supplies directly by washing into lakes and rivers and by entering the soil where they can then sink their way to groundwater, and then indirectly by sitting on the surface where they are absorbed into the water cycle by condensation. Then, thirdly, we have the largest issue facing our water supply, global climate change. With this issue, we have globally rising temperatures that are creating more condensation, therefore meaning less moisture on the surface and more moisture rising into the atmosphere, and that therefore, for example, we have Lake Chad in Africa. This lake that was once the size of Maryland was an important source of water, food, ecotourism, and a source of stability for the region. But over the past several decades, it has shrunk to the size of Delaware, or to one-fifth of what it once was. It's been declared a humanitarian crisis by the UN, and it is affecting more than 30 million people. Additionally, it's been predicted to dry up in the next 20 years. So, aside from water being burned up into the atmosphere at a faster rate, we're using more water than ever. As a population, we not only use water for drinking, but it is also necessary for everything we use on a day-to-day -day basis. To build a car, we use 350,000 liters of water to build a single vehicle. Two to seven barrels of water are needed to achieve one barrel of oil. To create a single microchip, 32 liters are necessary. And for a burger? A single hamburger, 2,400 liters of water. So we've got some solutions here. All water is at risk of contamination because the water system is one that is worldwide. Chemicals used in China can find their way to organic farms in the Annapolis Valley, and water pumped from an underground spring in Maine is shipped to consumers in Europe. So really, since we're all part of this global system, the natural water cycle and also the process of globalization, wouldn't it make more sense if we all started acting like it and taking full responsibility for our actions? There's a lot of ways to do this. One, buy local. The more local your food, the less water that went into its production. Instead of driving, walk. Challenge yourself to take shorter showers, and when buying new appliances, look for ones that are more fuel efficient. Two, take a water footprint survey. This will not only tell you where you stand in comparison to the rest of the world in terms of water usage, but it will also raise your awareness for what you can do to make a difference. Three, share the knowledge. The biggest way to make a difference is by being the change and sharing that change with the people around you. I hope this presentation helped you learn about the global water dilemma and that you go out there and make a difference. Thank you.